everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple with another YouTube demo for you today. Today is December 21st, so the holidays, Christmas is just around the corner and we are busy here at the store wrapping presents and getting everything ready for spending the holidays with our family. We hope that you are doing the same and that however you spend this the season, this holiday season, you do it with the ones that you love, your friends and your family, and you have a wonderful time. So from all of us here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, we wish you happy holidays. Now today we have got a lot to go over. Due to the end of the year coming up, you, will, you know, things are getting crammed, we're gonna be closed for a while. I'm not able to do all the YouTubes that I had slotted to do. You know, I schedule the YouTubes, gosh, like a month in advance. And so, um, sadly, we're not able to do the Greenhouse Society YouTube that I wanted to do, but everything's ready. It's all done. We did it for a make and take. The samples are here. The product is here. And of course, you know, the Greenhouse Society Stamps by Technique Tuesday are limited edition. So when we sell out, we sell out. They are $13 a stamp. They ship for completely free. You don't have to purchase $50. You can just purchase that stamp and it will ship for free. But we only have about 10 left. So before we get started on today's YouTube, which is using brand new dyes from Sizzix, they have a brand new category called Thinlets that's just released. It's for CHA, but of course, Scrapbooking Made Simple already has them in stock. Before we get started on the Sizzix, I wanna show off um, what the SMS girls did with the Greenhouse Society stamps. That way you can see it. And yes, they're online right now. Yes, you can go order it. $13 and it ships for free. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the embossing folders that we used with it because it, they're, they're an important part of uh, the Tim Holtz dies, the poinsettia and the wreath die that we used before. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tilt on down and I'm gonna say Merry Christmas to all of you, okay? Down we go, bye. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, Greenhouse Society stamp. Here's the November stamp. We have about 10 left. $13 ships for free. It's just beautiful. The girls did an amazing job. I want to show you some samples that we did, but before I show you the samples, I'm going to show you the embossing folders that we used with the samples. We used the Tim Holtz wreath. Gosh, what's it called? It's called Holly Pattern and Wreath Set. And we also used the Tattered or Textured Poinsettia Pattern Set. Okay. For the make and take that we did, we used the backgrounds. So we used this one here and we used this one here for what I'm gonna show you. But what I want you to know is if you own the Tim Holtz Tattered Poinsettia die or you own the Holiday Wreath die, you want these embossing folders. Why? Well, this embossing folder right here will add all the veining to all of your flowers. You'll die cut your poinsettia flowers out, you'll lay them in your embossing folder, and then it will go ahead and it will give you all the detail and all the veining for those flowers. This set goes with that tattered poinsettia, just like this set here goes with the wreath. You would die cut out your wreath, and then you would lay it into your embossing folder here, and it will add all the dimension and all the detail to that wreath that you want. So these are not going to be around forever. You know, they're holiday items. I want to give you an idea. See, there's the big flower, the medium flower, and the small. And look at all that yummy detail it adds to the poinsettias if you have that die. And here is the wreath. Same thing, if you already own the die, you might as well have the, the embossing folder as well. And if you don't own the die or the embossing folder, you wanna get them before holidays are gone and then they become hard to get. Look at cute, isn't it? And there's a whole YouTube on using um, the poinsettia and the wreath. I did it with double embossing powder and made cute ornaments. So I just wanted to tell you that not only is the Technique Tuesday Greenhouse Society stamp uh, on the website now, but we'll also be putting the Tim Holtz embossing folders on a YouTube Yummy. And if you already have the dies, you wanna get these two sets. You don't wanna miss out. I know Christmas is coming close and you probably already have all your things done, but you want them for next year or after Christmas when you have all your pictures to scrap. You wanna be able to have these. All right, so I'm gonna show you very quickly some samples that the girls made using the Technique Tuesday Greenhouse Society stamp. 
So let's pull those up. We've got here where we use the detailed embossing powder and gold and then she colored them in. So there's one. We have it in the blue. Just a really simple, easy to do card. I love this one. I think it's so pretty. Just beautiful. And I think this is using authentic paper. Again, very simple, but look at the bows. Aren't they cute? And she even used for the corners, little ribbon for ribbon corners. Here we have another very vintage, rustic-y looking card. Again, all using the one stamp. Now what I'm going to show you here are six cards that we did for the make and take. They're made exactly the same way. The only difference is we changed the background paper. We changed this sheet right here, the one that's got the little roll to it. The matting paper here is the same, the stamp is the same, the matting, the ribbon, everything's the same with the exception of this sheet of paper. And for this, we use the Coordinations Color Core Paper. So when you sand or tear this, it doesn't tear to white and it's not a solid core, so it doesn't stay the same color all the way through this will go to a lighter color of the top. So here we did it in the green, and when you sand it, it sands to a lighter shade of the green. So the coordinations paper is awesome for using your embossing folders. <clears throat> I'm sorry, and yes, it will all be on a YouTube Yummy as well. But I wanna show you these six cards because what a great gift this would make, whether you're doing it for Christmas cards or birthday cards, but to make somebody a set of the same cards, just varying one little bit of it, the background paper, bundling it up and giving it as a gift for them to then send to family and friends. So we've got the, we've got the bright green, then we have the red, same exact card. We only changed the background. Here we've got a tan or a brown. The dark brown. And of course we all we use the Tim Holtz embossing folder on the back and just gave it a light sand with our sand it gadget. We've got the rustic green, the olive green. Same card. And then a very light. Look at that. We've got the same card, just done with different background papers. Put them together, bundle them up, and give them as a wonderful gift. You know, if you were at Hallmark, each of these would be easily $5. What a great gift for somebody to then turn around and send to their family and friends. And again, you can do it for birthdays, you can do it for thank you cards, whatever you, you wanna do. Just make a, 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 an entire assortment of the same card, bundle it up, and give it away. Very nice gift, it would be uh, appreciated, I'm sure, by just about everybody. So that is the Technique Tuesday Greenhouse Society stamp that sadly I'm not going to get to YouTube this year because there's just not enough time. We're running out. <laughs> the SMS girls are busy wrapping Christmas presents here for me at the store and we're closing for several days and we've just got so much going on. But I did want to show you what an awesome job they did and just how beautiful the cards came out to be. And that yes, now is the time to get the stamp because there's so few of them left. All right, all right, moving on. Now we're gonna go to the Sizzix product. And we've got new dies, a whole new die category from Ellison Sizzix. And they are called Thinlets. Thinlets. Very comparable to a, a memory box or a, um, what is it, a Dynamics. Um, you know, they're not a framelit because it doesn't have the open frame. It's similar to an older spellbinder. But what I can tell you about these is they almost have like a nonstick surface to them. And when you feel it, it feels very Teflon-y, a very nonstick surface. So your paper pops out very, very easily. And we like that about that, about them. We've used them for several cards. We've done several things with them because I really wanted to be sure that they worked. And they do, they come out great. Again, I think it's because the surface has this nonstick almost feel to it, like a nonstick coating. Now they are very intricate. So Ellison does say that it may take more than one pass through the Big Shot machine. I have to tell you, so far I haven't found that to be true with the exception of one type of paper. 
and that one type of paper happens to be Sukwang tape on cardstock so that we can glitter it. And I'm gonna show you that too. Other than that, it's been a one cut process. Now they come packaged a little different than normal. They come in these cute little cute little bags, these cute little pouches, and they come with something called injection foam. Here, I have already cut a piece of my injection foam off, and I'm gonna tell you, the injection foam obviously isn't big enough to cover the entire die. You're only supposed to use it where you're having trouble. If for some reason, because every machine, every Big Shot machine has a different sweet spot, if for some reason your little tip here right there, isn't cutting as well as you would like, you would just take your injection foam, cut a piece down to size, put it down right over the top, and then you would run it through your die cutting machine and it would cut away all of this extra, leaving just the injection foam right inside the die where you need it so the paper will pop out easy. I'll tell you, we haven't had that to be the case. Um, we haven't had to use our injection foam yet, so I am saving it in case we do. We also saw that after a little while, I have to say I'm very impatient and I don't like directions. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so how do you use this and what's this little piece here for? And I took this out and I flipped it over and it's like, well, they don't tell me and then I finally opened it up. Surprise! <laughs> I need to find some patience sometimes. It shows you right here what to do with the injection foam. Okay, and you can absolutely close this up, slip this into the front of your little pouch, and keep your dies right in that pouch. That's what it's for, to keep them nice and stored. And how easy and convenient is that? You've got a picture of what's inside, and you're good to go. Love the little pouch idea. In fact, we're trying to order them just the little pouches because people want just the little pouches for their other dies because they're just so useful. So if you have patience, <laughs> you can open it up and read the directions. If not, just watch this YouTube. We'll get you through it. So this is how they come, packaged like this, and the, everything's in there. I do want to show you really quickly another set. Here's this set. When I looked at it, I thought the heart was incorporated in the big background die. It's not. The heart is separate. So we opened it up, and look at that. Ellison knew, they knew better than we did. They knew I was gonna want it separate and that's exactly how it is. So we've got the background here and we've got the heart. Because when you look at the picture, it looks like it's all one. It's not. So when you're out shopping, if you're shopping in your local retailer who carries Sizzix, you just take a look and you know turn the die upside down, move it around, make sure that you see all the pieces that it comes with. And of course, if you're shopping online at Scrapbooking Made Simple, we have images to show you what each piece comes, which you, uh, a picture of each piece that you're gonna get. So you'll know you're getting four pieces or three pieces or two pieces, but just beautifully intricate dies. I wanna show you how to use them. Now here, I did this one, and I used a piece of the um, Coordinations Darks paper, the one I had up here, right here. I used a piece of that. And I just cut out this die, very simple, very easy. But instead of chalking around the edges, I took my sand it gadget and I sanded it around the edges, giving it the look like I've almost chalked it, like I've almost inked it. Isn't that so pretty? So I'm gonna show you how to cut these. I have got my die here. I have got my paper. And of course, I'm gonna pull over my trusty dusty Big Shot machine because of course the Big Shot machine is the die cutting machine of choice here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Now, there has been lots of talk of wax paper and does it work, does it not work, when do you use it, when do you not use it? So I went out and I bought Reynolds wax paper. <laughs> hey Reynolds, there's a plug for you. Okay, so we bought some just some Reynolds wax paper and I've got it here. What do you do with the wax paper? Well, because it's an intricate die, lots of little detail going on, it is said that if you use the wax paper, it helps the die release easier. Now, we found that even not using the wax paper, the dies come out really nice from these. But if you wanna use it, it certainly doesn't hurt the die. It, act, it will put a level or a layer in there that will help the die pop. Um, very simple, very easy. It'll pull very, very easy, especially since you don't want in, maybe injection foam everywhere all over your die. So I have got a piece of wax paper. 
I am going to take my multi-purpose platform. I'm going to keep it completely closed. I have my do not cut plate on the top. Very quickly, people want to know why do I put my do not cut plate face uh, on the bottom of my platform as opposed to making my sandwich the other way. I could put my cut plate, you can see all the cuts, on the bottom of my multi-purpose platform. Then I could put my paper, then my die, well, my wax paper, then my die, and then my do not cut plate. And the thought is, this is easier because you can see exactly what you're doing. You can see where it's going to cut. That's true, but what's going to happen is as you run your do not cut plate through your Big Shot machine, because it's going against the rollers, it will start to warp. And yes, you can flip it back and forth and back and forth to keep that warpage to a minimum, but it will start to warp. And the idea of a do not cut plate is to keep a very smooth glide through the machine with no warpage in that plate at all. It keeps a very smooth glide. So we recommend you put your do not cut plate right against your multi-purpose platform. Then you would put your die your wax paper if you so choose to use it, your cutting paper, so my paper that I'm going to be using, and then my last uh, clear plate to make my sandwich. Now if you're using an XL, uh, an XL plate, cutting plate, the one that's really long, it has a shim that's already built into it. But then you need one more shim. You're going to need the Thin Die Adapter by Ellison. They're $10 by Sizzix. We do sell them online. But if you want to do any wafer dies using your XL platform, you're going to need to have that Thin Wafer Die Adapter. And again, it's $10. Without it, you won't be able to do your spellbinders. You won't be able to do the new thinlets. You won't be able to do any type of wafer die. Now I'm going to send this on through my machine and you may hear some creaks and some cracks and that's okay. That's just the plates making their little noise. Not going to cause a problem. I'm going to pull it out. See, just that simple. It literally just lifted right off. And then I would sit there and poke it all out and get it out. Now I still have the little pieces here to pop out, but that's easy peasy. And they just literally poke, everything pokes right out so that when it's all done, it looks like this. That's how nice their dies are. That's how well they cut. And again, if you want to try using the wax paper, use the wax paper. If you want to try without, try without. Of course, you can't use the wax paper for more than one, but then you do get this piece right here. Now, what would you do with this? Well, this is a non-porous material. Oh my gosh, you could alcohol ink this. You could use this as a mask and put it down and spray over it. You, <laughs> you could take your Copic markers to it. There's a lot of things I wouldn't throw this away. That's me, but that's the wax paper cut out. You could use this just as an embellishment all on its own. So you only get one use out of wax paper, but thankfully it's relatively inexpensive. <laughs> okay, and then here's my die. Got a little, here's my die, ready to go again. That easy and that simple. So, I am going to show you next what else you can use the thinlets with? What other kinds of papers? I'm going to put this one right there. Gosh, the little bits and pieces are still... You almost just take your little finger and flick it and all the little bits and pieces fall out. I have got my multi-purpose platform completely closed. I've got my do not cut plate down. This time, I am going to use my Sukwang tape. I have taken my big roll of Sukwang tape. I have peeled off a piece because it's immediately sticky and I have backed it to inexpensive cardstock. This is now ready to die cut you, or glitter or whatever you want to do and you can leave it like this forever. Until you pull this top piece off, it's good. Once you expose the sticky, you got to do something with it. But we make thousands of these for when I do my Be A Die Cut Diva and when I do Glitter Goddess. Oh my gosh, Glitter Goddess, we use thousands of these when I do my class. 
but I do want to show you that your new thinlet die will cut this so then you can glitter it. I'm going to put it over. Now this one's not going to quite fit, but that's okay. I'm going to put it over. I've got my multi-purpose platform completely closed, my do not cut plate, my die, and my sequing tape on my cardstock. Put my next plate on. Now, like I said, they've been going through with one cut, with one roll, no big deal. But with the sequing tape, it's a little bit thicker. So my recommendation is that you go back. Hear that crack, crack, crack? That's okay. People email me all the time. Oh my gosh, it was snapping and cracking. It's like, that's okay. I'm going to roll it back. And I am all cut. Oh, this is going to take time for me to pop out. But it's all, it's all cut. And when it's all cut, there, this one's ready to glitter. I would just pull my top piece back my and expose the sticky and start dumping my suit or my glitter ritz glitter over the top to make it any color I want. So we do recommend you go through twice, but it just all pops, it comes right out. This one's just a little intricate, gonna take a little time to pop all these little pieces out. But they're just beautiful when they're done. Okay? Absolutely gorgeous. So yes. Your thinlets will cut your souk wang tape when put onto cardstock. So then you can use your glitter ritz glitter, or you can use flocking, or you can use micro beads. You can use anything with this souk wang tape. It will hold absolutely everything. Okay, so that works there. Then I want to show you that it will work with fun foam. Here we've got fun foam. And this is actually adhesive fun foam. So it's fun foam on one side, adhesive on the back. And again, I'm just going to put it right over the top. I'm going to put my cut plate down. And I'm going to send it on through. Now you can do it once, you can do it twice. Because the fun foam smushes down to almost nothing, I found that a one cut um, works just fine, but if you're worried and you want to roll it back through, that's okay. And again, there we go. It just pops right out. All the little pieces just come right out. And you've got your die. Oops. Let's see. There we go. They all hook into each other, all the little curly cues and loop-de-loos, but this will just pop right out. All out of fun foam. Here's another one I did out of fun foam. Beautiful, isn't it? Now if you, with fun foam, then what you can do is make a stamp out of it. You can mount the fun foam on something and you can put your ink on it and then press it down and you've made a stamp using your fun foam. What a great way to use your Sizzix die is by making stamps out of them. I got a piece of yellow in there. Wouldn't that be just a gorgeous stamp and then put a monogram in the center? Beautiful. All done with fun foam. Easy to do. So there are a lot of uses for the new dies. And again, they have this feeling that they've been coated with something so that the paper just pops right out. You can use your wax paper if you choose. Let's do it one more time put my die on top of my do not cut plate. My wax paper goes before my paper because it's going to put a barrier in between so that it pops easier. And my cutting plate. And let's send it on through. Little cracks are okay. Ah! And look at it, it just comes right out. There's my wax paper die cut. And here, here's my actual die cut. And I just need to go in and take all the little bits and pieces out. But no trouble at all. I know some of the dies out on the market, boy, we've purchased them. I keep trying to buy them. I want to sell them in my store, but they just don't work like this. 
Ellison and Sizzix, they know what they're doing. They know how to create a wonderful dye. They know what works. And they're just, they're consistent. They work each and every time. And for me, that's really important. If I'm going to sell it here at the store, the dye has to work each and every time. If you have to cut it five times to get one die cut out of it, that's not good enough for me. I want you to be successful. I want you to be crafty and creative every single time because what if it's the last sheet of paper <laughs> and you just need this one to cut to finish the last project, the last page of a project, and then it doesn't cut and you've wasted that paper and you can't get it again. And how disappointing is that? We want you to be successful and crafty and creative every time. And Sizzix gives you that with their new Thinlit dies. They absolutely do. They work like a dream. I am so excited to have them. It's a whole new level of die cutting for them. And I'm thrilled that we already have them in stock in our store. So, <laughs> holy smokes, artichokes, what did we learn today? Well, we learned that the new Sizzlet, or Thinlets, oh, they've got sizzlets and thinlets and inkets and, and uh, just so many its. <laughs> now here, this one's got a little bit of piece of paper left in. I'm just gonna take my Tim Holtz pokey tool and pop it right out, easy peasy. But we learned that they've got, that a Sizzix has got a new dye category called thinlets. They're very intricate dyes. They um, see, you, you see what you cut because the ridge, the die cutting ridge is right on the outside of the die, unlike a spellbinder where it's centered and you need to kind of be careful if you want to be centered on whatever. Sizzix, not a problem. What you see is what you cut. They have this feel of Teflon on them so that your paper literally just pops right out. The dies are beautifully intricate. They do recommend that, you know, if you're having a concern, just put it through twice, pass it through twice, no big deal. They come, let me get rid of my big shot machine here. Boy, and those of you who picked it up for $49.99, that was a steal. <laughs> I hope you've got them. I know we're still shipping a few, but my goodness, it was a great value. They come in these cute little, the new thinlets come in this cute little pouch. They do have injector foam here. It's not meant to cover the entire die. It's just meant to cover a little place that perhaps you're having trouble because each machine has a different sweet spot with the rollers. So if you're having a little trouble, you can put a little piece of injector foam there. You just cut it out, cut it to the size, tap it on, and then roll your die through like you normally would, and it will trim that injector foam down just so it fits in that one little bit. But I'll tell you, we haven't had to use it yet so far. If you're concerned, I would first try the wax paper because as you saw, it just, everything just falls right out. It just comes out beautifully, just as easy as can be. We are using the coordinations paper, so I can take my sandpaper. I could throw this through an embossing and, and uh, add some texture to it, or I can just give the edges a rough sand just to expose that lighter color. Almost looks like we've then chalked it. Sand it gadget if you don't have one of these yet, you need to get one. <laughs> so the, the thinlets will go through paper, it will go through Sukwang tape. I do recommend two passes through the Sukwang tape. It will go through fun foam. Really, one pass is enough, but if you're if you're concerned, and this is even thicker because it's got the adhesive on the back. Um, so if you're concerned, just roll it through twice, but I have to tell you, everything just pops right out of it. And with the fun foam, you can make great stamps using your Sizzix dies. Okay, easy to use. Um, the sets are amazing. I'm gonna show you what sets they have now. So we've played with this one and with this one. Let me find, this one is right here. And let's see, I have got this one. And here, look at, is that not stunning? And a great frame that also comes with um, a couple little accent pieces and a key. This is the one I was showing earlier where the background piece is one piece and the heart is separate so you can use them together or separate. We've got this frame right here where the little pieces here, this little pops up. It's, it's got a cut there on the top and the bottom so it, little, it has a little 3D pop up there. We've got some wonderful borders. These have sold like hotcakes. I have to tell you, they've been our best seller. Another beautiful frame. And what I like about this frame is it's symmetrical. Some of the frames are not symmetrical, um, like this one, 
where there's a definite top and a definite bottom. I like the symmetrical frames because then um, no matter how you place it, it's right. We've got the cute little um, jar. Isn't that darling? So you get a ton of pieces in there. There's lots of pieces. It's not a one piece jar. You've got all the different pieces to make. We've got a beautiful doily and this doily comes with the border. A fun camera set for those scrappers out there or those people on vacation traveling. And again, lots of dies. Not one or two, but lots of them. We've got a beautiful banner set. Now, I'm going to show you a card with this set that is so stinking cute. In fact, I'm going to hold it to the side so when I pull up the card, you can see it. Another Flourish and Butterfly set. And another um, frame. But again, you get one, two, three, four. There's a bunch of different dies in here. You get a ton of dies, and they're $20. They retail for $20, but no, they're going to be on a YouTube Yummy, no worries. And lastly here. So now let me show you some samples. Don't forget this one, the one we were using today. Let me show you some samples of what the SMS girls did. So here is the one that we were using today, and we put it on a shimmer sheet, and emboss the shimmer sheet. And this is using that cute little flower and all the cute, here's the heart from the one set. Cute, huh? Here's another one using the die we did today. Now this is the one that's just darling. Well, there's a couple of them that are just darling. Look at what Christy did. She used this little banner die and she used the clouds and she used the little uh, little zigzags. She cut the zigzags from this piece right here um, for a get well card. You know, sorry you're under the weather. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> She's so creative. Here's another one using what we did today. And then Claire put this one together. Again, using this set. This piece here is right there. And then it's got the little arrows, and she's got the little arrows coming off the hearts. Isn't that cute? Now this one we used, where is it? Let's see. This one we used here. Only instead of using the die, we used the negative. We used what was left. We used the negative, and they used I think it's this set here to make all the little flowers and everything. So then there was a die cut out of this. And from that, they made this card. So here they die cut out the frame and used the negative, so the open space that was left. And the die cut was used to make this card. Can you see how it has a little opening there? Very clever. The girls are so good. <laughs> They're just beautiful. And last but not least, one more. And we've used the coordinations paper on almost all of these cards to sand and to give definition and we've used embossing powders. And the coordinations paper comes in uh, four and a half by five and a quarter, I think, sizes and the six by six. It also comes in 12 by 12, but it comes in brights, it comes in neutrals, it comes in darks, and it comes in pastels. And you get 40 sheets. So the colors are just absolutely yummy. You get 40 sheets in each pack. They're $5.99, and yes, all the coordinations will also be on a YouTube yummy. Holy smokes, we've got a lot going on. So we have got the Technique Tuesday stamp, that's on sale for $13. We're going to have the Tim Holtz embossing folders on sale for a YouTube Yummy because they go with the dies that you have, the poinsettia die or the wreath die. We have all of the new thinlets from Sizzix that'll be on a YouTube Yummy. Beautiful. We've got the coordinations paper that'll be on a YouTube Yummy. 
Wow, there's a lot for you to choose from. We'll put the sand egg gadgets on a YouTube Yummy because you really can't have the coordination paper if you don't either throw it through an embossing folder or sand it or tear it. That's the beauty of the paper. I mean, and even if you don't want to use an embossing folder, just sanding the edges gives a nice rustic look to it. It's just, it's awesome, awesome paper. So we've got that for you. All right, is that enough? Oh, here's the, here's the Technique Tuesday stamp. And the, one of the cards that we did. Okay, I am going to, I love this card. I think Christy did a beautiful job with this card. I hope you can see the, the stamp in the center. Just beautiful. I am going to tilt on up. And I am going to say, Wow, that was like two for two, two YouTubes for one. <laughs> Thank you so much for staying with me this year. I appreciate each and every one of you. Where are you going to find all of these amazing products that we showed you today? Well, of course, you're going to find them at Scrapbooking Made Simple at our website or in our retail store. The online address is www.shop at the word atsms.com or www.shop at scrapbookingmadesimple.com or www.scrapbooking-made-simple.com. All three addresses will get you to the same place so you can let your fingers do the shopping. I will tell you if you have any problems putting your items in your shopping cart, close your browser and log back in. Go back in, close your browser up and then hit your Firefox or your Earthlink, open up a new window and start again and your items will go right into your shopping cart without any problem. But if you do, you can always give us a call here at the store. The SMS girls are thrilled to talk to you. All right, guys. So we got the YouTube yummies. I went through all of them, the paper, the dies, the embossing folders, all of it on sale and we'll keep it on sale through the new year for you. All of us here at Scrapbooking Made Simple wanna wish all of you out there a very happy holiday. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, whatever it is you celebrate, just make it a good one and, um, and we wish you many, many blessings. All right, take care, bye.